Hello and good morning. Now all through this week, we hope that you've been tuning in for your daily dose of Wake Up Nigeria. I'm sure they have. <laughs> uh, we also hope that you plan to tune in every day until Friday. But first, we have to uh, get this morning uh, going. Yes. So good morning to you. It's going to be morning. a special day. And as usual, it's going to be a three-hour engagement. My name is <laughs> Titi Lyo Oyinson. And I'm Yomi Ope. We are streaming live right now on tvcontinental.tv and on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, check us out at TVC Connect. Send in your comments on social media with the hashtag WakeUpNigeria. Ask Titi where she's been. Yeah. yeah. I've been to hashtag. City. Hashtag. I've been to City Where did you go? Queen. Mm. So, hey, you need to download our mobile app, any of the Android or iOS stores. Watch us live on all your mobile devices from anywhere in the world. Ah, so let's go straight to what we've got for you this morning. Pop and Afro pop musician. Pop and Afro pop. I like that. <laughs> Doherty Daffy, a.k.a. HDMI. He's going to tell us the meaning of that. Uh, he's going to be giving us uh, a first musical performance for this Wednesday. MM's life hack session will also be happening and you'll learn a thing or two as usual. She has something up her sleeve. Or is it sleeve? Or are these ponchos? Mm -hmm. ponchos? <laughs> yeah, and on relationship, Damilola Oluwatoyinbo is back with us uh, talking about getting into a new relationship. You know, over the last three weeks, we've been talking about breaking up, breaking mm -hmm. up. So now, you're After ready to get back, get back into the market, yeah. as they say. And, uh, you know, after the breakup, mm. you know, so he's going to be telling you what to do. The do's and don'ts. Yes, sir. What to wear. <laughs> and things like that. Wow. Staying nourished is also essential, especially for our Muslim brothers and sisters who are fasting during this month of Ramadan. Nutritionist Susan Ajibadi will be highlighting food ideas for iftar to stay well nourished. Mm. Now, farming this morning will be focused on pigeons. Have you tasted pigeons before? I actually have. I've actually cooked it before. Oh, okay. Interesting. And all you need to know <laughs> to start pigeon farming. Mm. Mm. It's a really tasty meat. It's not delicate like you think. It's not delicate at all. It's oh, it's tough. hard. Yeah, it's really tough, but it's tasty. And from that, German-based Nigerian artist Mikolo will be giving us a second performance for this morning. He will be performing his song Arewa. Mm. Uh, it says. Um, now, of course, uh, last year we're going to be having Dr. Lawson on the show and talking about hip pain. Mm why some people have them and some don't yes, and what you can do to uh well at least help yourself when when you're faced with uh such situations yes and some of the things that could be uh, wow. the case a lot of different areas of the body people just have pain i don't know it's i'm really interested in um the hip pain discussion because i've been having um hip pain oh so. okay uh, it's I had understandable though <laughs> yeah i know i haven't had muscle pull last night Mm. And well, on, well, I think basically the early hours of this morning, and I don't. I just knew that I was in pain. I was groaning. And then my husband just woke up, and then he started massaging the leg, massaging it, massaging it, <laughs> massaging. It. I was like, "Are you okay? Are you alright?" So I'm like, "Oh." Your husband is a real life yeah. superhero. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, yesterday while I was in radio, someone mentioned something. Apparently, I think it was Wale Popopo. He mm. said, "When you have cabbages." Mm. You wrap them around your joints. Yeah. I was shocked with the um, film. That's um, clean um, film. Foil clean paper. film, like no, not for paper. Um, the transparent the nylon. The transparent like, nylon. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you wrap it with film. Okay. And leave it for like maybe overnight. Mm -hmm. It actually relieves the pain from the really? joints. And I was like, Are you kidding me? I didn't I've, know that. I've heard things cabbages. like that before. Yeah, yes, I've heard cabbages. Like I was that shocked. Before. Mm. Direct Just contact yesterday. with the skin and all that with some t particular fruits, vegetables, and juices. Even fruits, yeah. vegetables. I've and heard juices. that before. Okay. It's just I don't. I feel like some of them might be placebo effect, though. Mm. Yeah, um, when like I say placebo temporary. effect, like okay, they told you it's gonna work, so it now works. Like in your mind, it just yeah. works. Your mind already. Makes yeah, your you mind just it. triggers it to oh, work. Yeah. But you know, um, there are a lot of hip replacement surgeries that happen all over the world for different reasons yeah. because someone has been sitting wrong in their office chair mm. because someone has been sleeping wrong yeah. sleeping wrong the kind of someone, mattresses you use. exactly <laughs> you know um and and it's really sad and it's very expensive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if for instance you're having you know any of those you might want to make sure you stay 
to listen to the doctor and his, uh, you know, his take on what to do. Yeah. yeah, but sometimes I feel that those pillows don't work. Those um, <laughs> pregnancy <laughs> pillows. Are you using them the right At way? At some point, I guess. Uh, I guess maybe when you, you start. Have to hang the leg on it. <laughs> what <laughs> again does it? What ex okay, there's, so there's, so basically, there's no a, no rule to using it. Yeah. You just it just it's more like a support. You know, it's just something really soft that so, supports. So it's, you. I think it's just supposed to make you feel more comfortable. Does your belly use the pillow? Is your belly resting on the pillow? Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Is it? Not exactly. So I think that's one. So I think I'm more concerned about my legs. Aha. Uh -huh. Because I feel the pain mostly on yeah. my, you but know, maybe, legs, my yeah. hips mm. and my legs yeah. than, you know. So the, the so twin, if you so. relieve the, the, the pressure from the belly itself, the gravity, like the pressure, it's pulling you mm. down. If you put something under it, you're relieving that pain. So mm. try that. I'll try. try it. Okay, so that's yeah. Doctor TT in the. No, beginning. that's from <laughs> carrying. That's from carrying two at the same time. So, <laughs> yo, I, I had well. to figure something. Why don't out. you? Why don't you try? Um, what? So well, how about how about like um, push torpedic mattresses, oh. the ones that um, take the shape of your body. Mm. So those kinds of things work as well, and uh, or just sleep in a hammock and just. Swim. <laughs> What is your me talking about? Okay, so I like the look you giving me like. It's nice, okay. but it's expensive. expensive. <laughs> Hammock, I don't know who's going to He's a rich man, he'll buy it. You know, it's, it's funny because I had that conversation with my husband this morning. And I'm looking at your me and I'm like, maybe you want to buy it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, if you have like. He said he, he okay. has a lot of money, he can buy how, it for you. Don't worry, just remind him after the show. Like, it was like maybe $700 or Exactly, so he wow. gets paid in dollars, you see. So. <laughs> oh, you were in here the day he mentioned it. Oh, I was, I was actually. So you yeah. guys were supposed to come and consult with me about this. Yeah, year. so you can collect that dollar as well. You're not a performance coach anymore. <laughs> Earning extra, extra income. So we have to head we over have to, to the yes, indeed. Brian is on standby for us. All right, this is before I move on, I have a question for you. Can placebo effect work for someone who is broke? Ah, <laughs> act like you is have money and you have money. Exactly. That's a very good question. Just, we should just try it out. Money. We should ask him nice. Put some paper in your wallet just, and act just, like it's think, money. Think like a no one's All right, let's head to the news. Now, President Mohammed Buhari has returned to Abuja after performing the Umrah in Saudi Arabia. The presidential aircraft conveying the president and members of his entourage, which took off from Royal Terminal of King Abdulaziz International Airport, landed at the presidential wing of Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport on Tuesday. The president, chief of staff, minister of federal capital territory, FCT, acting inspector general of police and other government functionaries were at the airport to welcome the president. President Buhari is expected to preside over the valedictory session of the Federal Executive Council today. And the Minister of Health is on the hot seat at the Senate plenary. Uh, this is after lawmakers summoned him to set the record straight after a senator raised a motion citing concerns about the deplorable state of teaching hospitals in the country. The health system is believed to be in shortage of medical personnel and dilapidated infrastructure. The health minister was able to paint a picture of the health system depicting its progress and challenges. And Oshu State government threatened to ban all mining activities in all parts of the state if cases of kidnapping continue. The state governor, Wei Gao told us state, stated this at the security stakeholders meeting held in Elisha, Oshu State. This is due to cases of kidnapping being reported in some parts of the state, allegedly being perpetrated by some illegal miners. This is the reason for this summit held at the instance of the governor of the state governor toward checking the influx and activities of illegal miners in Ejesha land and in some parts of the state. The state governor warns that government will no longer tolerate illegal mining. And also the Minister of Education has called for improved budgetary allocation for the education sector. The minister, while addressing journalists at the valedictory briefing in Abuja, says that it's the only way the Nigerian education system can compete with other education systems in the world. The Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, believes that the Nigerian education system will do better with improved funding uh, of the sector. In past... In the past, Nigerian universities attracted students from other African countries as well as foreign lecturers due to high standard of its education system. But now, Nigeria is striving to bring its education sector up to speed. 
And outside Nigeria, U.S. abortion rights campaigners, including several Democrats running for president in 2020, rallied in the front of the Supreme Court while others protested across the country to protest new restrictions on abortion passed by legislatures in eight states. Colette Luke has more. And then the abortion rights activities gathered in Minneapolis, uh, San Francisco and Portland to uh, condemn the laws passed by Republican-dominated legislatures, including a near total ban on abortion in Alabama, even in cases of rape or incest. So 2020 Democratic candidates, including Kirsten Gillibrand, Cory Booker, and Amy, uh, Amy uh, Koblucha, also protested outside the High Court. In recent days, Ohio and Georgia have banned abortions after six weeks of pregnancy or after a heartbeat can be detected, and Missouri passed a ban after eight weeks. That's it on the news. Update for this hour. Weather update is next. So it uh, looks like uh, lots of stories in the papers, as usual. Yes, indeed. And we're starting with the Nation newspaper this morning. It says here, federal government attacks Obasanjo for divisive comments. Uh, anger over ex-president's felonization remark. Uh, it also says here, house boy to die for hanging, uh, by hanging for killing boss. And uh, it's continued on page six. There are more information. Uh, if you need it there. Uh, it also says, why WK declared war on me by GOC? Intel's not owing NPA, it says. More on page 11. Uh, it also says here, MPC directs CBN to restrict banks' access to bonds and treasury bills. Police raise alarm over plots to scuttle inauguration in Ogun. Uh, it also says, the federal government approves 25 billion naira for ASU. FIRS plans to exceed 5.32 trillion naira revenue. MTN equities rally 2.68 trillion naira in four days. Uh, knock for National Assembly over rules. And finally, Quara House Clerk held over 400 million naira pay. That's what we have on the cover of the nation. All right, let's check out The Guardian. Don't speak for Boko Haram, herdsmen. Uh, Afeni Ferre tells federal government. Only groups backers will condemn Obasanjo. And uh, ex-president stance, divisive, says government. CBN retains lending rate at 13.5% amid inflation, slow growth. Bandits kill 34 in Katsina, uh, 10 others missing. Judge refuses to disqualify self over alleged misconduct in Okorocha's suit. And that's on uh, page seven. And hobbled by self-interest, Lagos lawmakers go home without garlands. Uh, it's a special report on page 36. MTN still owes 55 billion naira for SIM infraction, must complete payment by May 31st. That's next week. And militants threaten to declare Niger Delta Republic on June 1st. And uh, EFCC arraigns ex-customs boss, Okafo, 
for alleged 3 billion naira fraud. And National Assembly bows to pressure, drops media restrictions. Saraki orders probe, summons clerk. That story, uh, that story, you find it on page six. And that's about all that we can take on the cover of The Guardian. We have the cover of The Punch up next. It says, five states lock horns with federal government over health care fund. Benue, Sokoto, Cross River, Rivers say federal government politicizing disbursement. Some uh, troubling pictures of the Lagos Badagri Expressway in Lagos on Tuesday, flooding, bad roads, sewage, all on one expressway. It's uh, really sad to see that people have to go through this every day. Mm. Uh, it also says here, um, the acting CJN dragged to court over alleged age falsification. Serap Bishop react as Saraki rejects satanic accreditation guidelines. Lack of funds, federal government shuts three foreign missions. Ex-aides sue communications minister for alleged diversion of salaries and allowances. On 400 million naira payments, EFCC quizzes Quara government, assembly officials. It also says here, court sentences Cameroonian home help to death for killing boss. Ogun residents protest as federal government marks 300 houses for demolition. And finally, Buhari returns from Saudi Arabia, warns against drug trafficking. That's mm. what it says on the cover of The Punch. Let's check out the Vanguard and uh, Fulanization agenda. Obasanjo seeks to divide Nigeria in his old age, says the federal government, and says his comments are divisive, depressing. Can Onaikon, Martins, Adebanjo, and others back Obasanjo. And CBN to limit banks' appetite for government securities retains NPR at 13.5%. Bandits kill 34 in three Katsina local government areas. Hmm. Otedola visits Chairman Chuku in London, offers more assistance. And some other stories down below. Um, alleged professional misconduct, EFCC reports Justice Taiwo to NJC over Saraki. Okorocha. And uh, National Assembly drops stringent accreditation measures for journalists as Saraki vows to probe matter. ERGP's 7% uh, target not achievable by 2020, says Udoma. And Ondo students shut down Akure over tuition fees hike. And uh, that's about all that we can take on the cover of the Vanguard okay. this uh, Wednesday. Yes, uh, I have the Daily Trust in my hands here. It says, as bandits kill many in, Kat in three Katsina local governments, protesters take corpses to government house, Emir's palace. Mm. Wow. Uh, that's a story you can find on page five. There's also a graphic here of uh, Borno's 44 mega schools. I think we talked about this earlier in the week. Yeah. Uh, they are quite interesting photos. Uh, very uh, high standard, if you, if you, if I could put it that way, yeah. of uh, construction there. But it also says here, Boko Haram, Obasanjo's comment, divisive, depressing, says federal government. Uh, it says here, uh, states got 691 billion naira Paris club refunds in March, according to the minister. It's day 17 of Ramadan, and uh, there are details. Uh, there's also details of timing, Ramadan timings for Lagos. Uh, it's also 1,858 days since the Chibok schoolgirls were abducted. Hmm. That's what we have on the cover of the Daily Trust. All right, let's check out the Daily Sun. Obasanjo warns, uh, wants to divide Nigeria, says federal government. Demands apology from ex-president over comments on Boko Haram and others. And National Assembly backs down on stringent media accreditation conditions. And Saraki orders probe. And the federal government indicts governors on health care, accuses states of abandoning sector, with 14 not providing counterpart funds. That's a sad one. And Buhari back from Saudi, and the federal government engages U.S. over Dropbox suspension. Agbakoba, sues finance minister over local government funds, says councils without democratically elected leaders shouldn't get allocation. And that's a... That's a good angle. And NPR, CBN retains interest rate at 13.5%. And we have a, an interesting photograph on the cover of the Daily Sun 
with Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro flanked by his wife and the former governor of Abia State, Oji Uzokalu. That's what we have on the cover of the Daily Sun. Yeah, and that's all we can take on the newspaper headlines for now. Mm. We'll take it again in the second hour of the show. But uh, we'll take a quick break and be back with the traffic situation in Lagos. Welcome back. It's still Wake Up Nigeria. Time for a quick traffic update. As regards Lagos, please note you can always be part of this segment. Send us a message. Send us a picture. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, just let us know what your traffic situation is like wherever you are. Maybe take a traffic selfie, you know. Uh, smile through it, maybe. <laughs> we'll probably be checking out your tweets a bit later on. Um, checking out the traffic situation between... Ojota and Marina right now. Uh, if, for instance, you're leaving Ojota bus stop, which is along Ikorodu Road, uh, and it, you know, bypasses the expressway, uh, it says here that it'll take you about 55 minutes for you to get all the way from Ojota to Marina. But where are the hot spots, you might ask? Well, I can tell you around Igbobi area of uh, the Ikorodu Road, you're going to be slowed down for about 15 minutes. Uh, it does seem to be quite jammed around there. It's also jammed when you get to uh, between Stadium, Bus Stop and Alaka. For some reason, it is really, really slow there. It would be great to know what exactly is causing that particular gridlock. And it's quite slow all the way till you get to um, Ijora. Yeah, once you get to Ijora, you're going over the bridge heading into Echo Bridge from Ijora, it's going to slow down just a bit. Akbogmo area is moving a little, little by little, uh, and it starts moving really free-flowing until you get to Marina itself, the actual Marina Road itself. Uh, you're going to spend about 20 minutes uh, from there to Marina bus stop. And, uh, well, hey, good luck to you if you're heading along that particular route. You might want to find an alternative. Uh, but I know the team are on standby with some updates uh, themselves. So what do we have, people? What do we have? Well, uh, we're still um, searching for tweets. But uh, before that, before the tweets start uh, coming in, we have a couple of uh, traffic updates uh, just around Lagos. So if you live in uh, Bega area, Ojo de Bega area, and uh, you're off to the island this morning, uh, Bega is free. Um, up until, as you go up until uh, uh, Ojota area, it gets a little bit busy, just a little bit, just a few minutes, and then across, as usual, it's free all the way to uh, Yanawuru, where things get slightly busy, again, just a few minutes, until you get to the third mainland bridge, uh, where things get busy from the middle, right from the middle, quite thick uh, this morning but from the middle of Third Milan Bridge up until the island. So uh, you might want to uh, look at alternative routes if those, guys, those ones are going to be freer for you. Okay. But not too bad this morning. We have um, a few tweets here. At um, Youth Toy, Ikbaja Inward, Yano Ikbaja is good to go at, and this came in at about 5.35 a.m. this morning, which is um, to six, quite an hour ago. Um, Yano Ikbaja Inward, Dokwemu, on the under is good to go well at about that same time so basically i'm having tweets here these tweets are about like early hours at about 2 6 a.m this morning and then at um, 5 39 a.m ikeja on the bridge in what allen and roots allows our secretariat is good to go at the moment as well um any other recent updates well, there are, but I'm sure Titi already has yes, something Yes, I was for actually us. standing okay. by for you to wrap <laughs> yeah. that one up, oh, okay. MM, because I was just about to, you know, say a quick prayer for those who are moving from Aja all the way. <laughs> exactly to, what I was looking at here to, as well. <laughs> to Bonny Camp today in Victoria Island. So uh, for those of you who are moving from Aja area, you're going to have smooth sailing until you get to Ikota. 
oh, village. Wow. That's the place where the shopping complex is, and I think there's some other uh, estates around there. And you're being advised to take an alternative route. Now, there's the Scintilla Road. That's the Chevron alternative route. If you know it, uh, it might be a 10-minute saving grace for you. You'll take 10 minutes off your one-hour, 20-minute journey if you decide to take that uh, turn off there. Um, and you come through Chevron Drive back onto the express to take another 12 minutes before you take another uh, alternative route just off Scintilla, uh, that's uh, Piccadilly area. So if, for instance, you're moving along that road and you don't take any alternative routes, you are going to be on the road for about an hour, 35 minutes if you're coming from Aja all the way to Victoria Island. Another hot spot is... Um, uh, Marawa Junction. Uh, another hot spot is uh, the Leki toll gate itself. But basically, all the way through Elegushi, everything is bumper to fender. And you might as well just stay tuned to us on Wake Up Nigeria while you wait out the traffic. Because it seems like people are going to be there all the way to Tickle Bay, all the way to Leki Phase 1 roundabout all the way down to the toll gate. And then even after the toll gate, sadly, Colosseum, everywhere, everywhere. It's just, just cars everywhere. Don't, don't, just don't fight it. Just sit down, chill, eat something, have a blast in traffic watching Wake Up Nigeria. Yeah, have that's a all I can tell you. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> We'll say a short prayer for you. That sounds like it's encouraging people to explode with <laughs> anger. I'll be coming to meet you guys in the kitchen, and I'm so glad I'm not on that road right now. But yeah. I'll be seeing you guys in a bit. Well, I think um, at that point, we are short. Traffic in Lagos is is a part of our lifestyle. But you know, it's unpredictable. So, like right now, from Yanong, Paja to Ikeja along, it's not so bad. Yeah. There's bumper to fender, yes, but there's more free um, freeway, so... Mm. It's not so bad after Free open areas. Yeah. Okay, guys, guess what's trending right now? Hashtag Nigerian mentality. <laughs> and you need to see the hilarious <laughs> pictures and memes. Like, I saw photos of these two small boys in oversized clothes. Mm -hmm. And you know what the, the person tweeted? The person tweeted that Nigerian mentality will buy clothes that you wear to 100 level. <laughs> Wow. Five, uh, six years. Hey, don't, oh, yeah. don't even get me started on that clothes <laughs> thing because the twins, I don't know, one, one of the twins, uh, her feet grow so fast yeah. and the other one is like just really inching along. So I have one of the girls who has feet two sizes bigger than the other. Mm. And then I always have this challenge having to find new shoes for one. But if you buy new shoes for one you have and to you get don't get for the other one, it's like, Mommy, what's going on? Yeah. Why didn't you buy for me? I'm like, but you, all your shoes are still there. So many. Um, and, it, and they're really expensive too. Yeah, so yeah sometimes scary. you have to buy one, two shoes. Some, there's a once, once or twice when maybe my wife buys shoes and maybe she buys like two sizes bigger. Uh, bigger. You know, sometimes I could complain, but you can see that being too big for me. <laughs> maybe like maybe when we're going to church or something. <laughs> yeah. But within a few months. Wow. I'm talking about two sizes. Mm. Within a few months, you just discover that the guy has grown into the it thing. It becomes, I yeah. told you so, moments. You know? <laughs> talking about, talking about kids, um, <laughs> would you hire a nanny with tattoos? <laughs> wow, okay. No, would that, you that hire a nanny with what? <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> it depends on the type, though. Well, yeah. I, not, I saw tattoos. that traditional last weekend. Tattoos. Oh, oh, traditional tattoos. Are you talking about traditional tattoos or the modern? I'm talking of tattoos. tattoos. Tattoo is tattoo. Tattoos no. tattoos. Like, Local I'm not, I'm not or talking, or I'm not saying, I'm not asking about uh, henna. No. Oh. <laughs> tattoos. Oh, no, no. We've had nannies that had tattoos. So, okay. the traditional tattoos, either... Which one is traditional? Dude, that's traditional the ones tattoos. That are from their childhood now. The ones that... Did, oh, they, which one is you, from childhood? Okay. okay. He's talking about the ones that sometimes is either the names are written yeah. or the family name or just language. something written. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm talking of tattoo, tattoo. Like, um, like scary like, lion kind no. of stuff. No. <laughs> I mean, like, body tattoos. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. They're body tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we had a nanny, right? Yeah. And on her arm, mm -hmm. she had um, like a writing. It looked green. So, mm, but okay. it looked like something that had been there for like yeah, 20 yeah. or 30 years. The green one is mostly the local ones, yeah, that's I what think. I'm saying. So, I don't yeah, know. What I think she's asking. referring to like, um, like a rose. food, like a snake. Down oh, your goodness. Back. Okay, no, snake is extreme. Oh, God. <laughs> Very. Snake is extreme. 
<laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, we had a conversation about this sometime, yeah. okay. you know, with a few mothers. And the question came up, well, like, if you... Okay, so someone said that she shared her experience of, you know, this very loving nanny, mm -hmm. you know, she used to have. Yeah. I mean, this, this nanny was amazing with her kids, but she had tattoos all over. Wow. And then whenever her, you know, friends or, you Let's know, see. would come yeah. over to the house and it is like... Okay. okay. <laughs> How are you comfortable with, with someone yeah. with so many tattoos taking care of your children? Mm -hmm. You know, and so it always raised an issue for other people outside us. But she didn't have a problem because she took she took very good care of her kids, like mm -hmm. fantastically and well. And you just said okay. she so, didn't have a problem with it. You see, yeah. that's always the problem. External forces. Yeah, well. This person takes good care of your child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the people coming in don't see any faults in how she cares for the children. Just the fact that she has... Tattoos, tattoos all over their body. Yeah. We judge too much. <laughs> True. Okay, That's well, the problem. Okay, yeah. so there's another issue for me. This so will never hire with no, tattoos. Well, <laughs> hey, you, know, you never know. I've not been yeah. I've not I've not been presented one before. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know yet. But the, right. the issue I have is how do I explain it to the kids who are a lot more enlightened these days mm. that I don't want them to get a tattoo. They're exposed to because someone they might who say that like it artwork actually. on their body. I call it artwork really. Um, and I encourage my kids to get involved with all sorts of artwork. They've done face painting at parties. That's face painting. So hold on now. Uh, is it not still art? It's face art painting now. Isn't and then there's maybe this beautiful tattoo of a rose or something. And then they're like, they want one. And I, how am I going to stop them? You don't have if, to stop them. You can give it to them. Really? I'm not Mary? kidding. Mary? See, <laughs> children are exposed to these things. And so do you know what many people do? They are gums that have these temporary ones. So it's you put end. it on your hand, and then when you start seeing it fade, you're irritated I by feel it. Like That's what happens to most I children. I don't have one. Mm. I don't expect my kids to. So want they usually to use one. sticker ones. Yeah, everybody yeah. does that. It's just, yeah, everybody does yeah. that. So every time you out do it, yeah, those, yeah. those is lollipop, lollipop sticker. Sweets. It's not they a big have deal. Them. See, like, sticker, spray on, oh. face painting, all face pa <laughs> all everything. I'm I'm not really a fan of any of oh, them. Okay. Oh, but no, no, my kids do looks, face painting all the time. Looks even fun. I do face painting. So <laughs> even if face painting... I don't see any problem. Okay, so, so yeah. when... when yeah, but when, says she doesn't like so it. So for yeah, a lot of people, for so some people... So there are face people. painters that draw things like skulls on, on children's faces. And they're ah, like, yes, they do. They draw skulls. things like, yes, like vampire fangs. Yes, you see them to imitate some cartoons that they've seen on TV. That's yeah. what they do. Yeah. When they get so home. if or, it's not a flower or even... Or Spider-Man's mask. Exactly. It just freaks me out. I just imagine... I just imagine... A, 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 child, a mother taking her child to, you know, mm -hmm. a carnival or something, mm -hmm. and then you draw a picture of like a max or so, sorry, a skull yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. And then she goes, I cover you with the blood of Jesus, so I should clean up. I, I use the blood of Jesus to I'm wipe not, off this I'm not evil man from, from your face. <laughs> I'm not it's gonna be Children's Day. It's going to be Children's Day on Monday. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just let the kids have fun. Exactly. Because when they go out, you know, you're ain't drawing no weird <laughs> ish on my kids' wait, wait, wait. face, In yo. any case, what usually happens is... No way! <laughs> In any case, what usually happens is that they'll show you pictures, maybe of like yeah. 10 things that they can draw. You Batman, um, Spider-Man... The kid now says they want the uh, vampire. Oh, thank God you called well. it. The Piki. <laughs> Titi, you're such a kid. We are not going to do no. this and now. We have to go no. on the break. Hell no. We are going on a short break. I cannot. <laughs> My Piki. Hell no. We pick we'll the blood you. of Jesus on this road. Now, this is Wake Up Nigeria, and you know, we come to you with the best kind of music. Now, HDMI is a pop and Afro pop musician with undeniable passion for music. And he's got a musical background as a, as a springboard. He became a choir master. We're going to talk about that, uh, his church roots in a bit. And uh, he started professional music uh, about 10 years ago. And 2017 saw him drop his single, Bobo You. Uh, a reggae dance hall that gained him some recognition and even multiple awards. And he's joining us this morning uh, to do something special. How you doing, HDMI? I'm fine. So good. HDMI, we all know HDMI as a cable <laughs> that we used to connect uh, computers to screens. <laughs> but what does your HDMI mean? Yeah, um, it's good to see. Know that um, HDMI has its own, you know, normal, you know, meaning to yeah. so everybody. So, but as an artist, you know, I coined my own meaning from, you know, from the from the should I say acronym? Yeah. yeah. It has an acronym for so, me. So what's, what's yours? H is? H, higher. Higher. Definition. Definition. Of musical. 
musical inclination. Inclination. I like it. <laughs> HDMI, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so um, you are. Uh, you've been doing music for 10 years. Yeah. Lots of studio work. You've worked with uh, a bunch of producers, Killer Tunes. Uh, you, uh, there's somebody else you said you've worked with. Good mix. Yeah, and what, what's it been, you know, dealing with these guys and how have you found your sound? Because you said it's now pop and Afro pop. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, over the years, I, you know, working with different producers, I got to understand that. Um, your sound is really very, very important as an mm. artist. Yeah. You know, it's very, very important. And then I've learned over the years, you know, I'm still learning though. Yeah. And, to, and uh, come to discover that, you know, as an artist, you need to get your own sound mm. that you know, your people will understand, will to flow with you. Yeah. And yeah. Um, over the years, uh, uh, working with other producers, I've learned from them too, you know, try to, you know, gain a synergy with them mm. in order to create you know my own special i song. love it i love it so now um of course usually when you when you do music in lagos different people represent different areas you know uh, uh olamide does his bariga thing yeah. whiskey his uh ojelek basuleri axis um two Face dbr doing mm. his uh first talk. so what do you represent what 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 town do you represent, represent in lagos? The town. all the right town. nice one nice one. so um, so the guys in the crowd, obviously, I mean, you, you deal with them you know, on a regular, sure. basis. regular basis. What do you do with the youths there? How, yeah. how do you engage with them? Yeah, definitely, you know, we get, we get to talk and, mm -hmm. you know, most of the time when we meet, you know, in public places, you know, most of them get to encourage them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get to encourage them, you know, because they've always known me to be a musical artist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when they get to see me, you know, you know, they hell out of the like, like, <laughs> Nice, <laughs> nice know, one. All right, things. so um, you're going to be performing for us today. What, what, what song are you going to be doing? Uh, yeah, I'll be doing somebody. 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 All right, so are you ready for us? Yeah, sure. All definitely. right, let's do it. HDMI. Yeah. Tags on the beating. What? <laughs> All right, thank you very much, HDMI, for that one interesting rhythm. Loved every bit of it. And someone always, my director has already called me Obioma this morning. Well, when you see me with my, and with my people here, you already know it's live hacks. It's live hacks in Titi's voice. <laughs> Sorry, unfortunately, I don't have the voice to carry, you know. But anyways, well, so today on Life Hacks, we'll continue on a no so fleece poncho. Yeah, so this is another kind of poncho. And just in case you did not catch up on last week's episode where I taught you how to make a poncho, you could check us up on our, you could check us, check up previous episodes on our YouTube platform. So ponchos, of course, let me remind you what they are. They're a piece of clothing that ought to keep you warm. And since the rains are coming in right now, what better time to create one as they are evolving? So today I'm going to teach you how to make a fleece poncho and this time I'm going to be making use of a denim. So just in case you're wondering what I have on my table right here, I have my denim fabric and I'm going to be making a really, really big poncho. Like I said, the rains are coming in and of course I have my Ankara fabric, which I have been, you know, cutting pieces of it, which I'm going to use in, you know, designing my poncho later on to just give it that Ankara traditional feel. All right, so of course I have my scissors, you have your fabric. You could use any type of fabric you you know you want to use. But today I'll be making use of a denim because I love denims, yeah. So first of all, um, the fabric I'll be making use of this one is pretty, it's pretty, you know, big. So I just folded this into, you know, so I folded it into half and then I folded the other half into another half, making sure that all sides are equal. So what I'm gonna do here right now is make sure I straighten them on your flat and a flat surface nicely. Yeah, quickly. So you could do this like in less than three minutes or so what you're gonna do here is just we are gonna cut out a triangle here on the on this edge. So what I'm gonna do here right now, so basically what we are trying to do is create an opening in the neck area. You're gonna see how it's gonna look. Like I said, this is a no sew poncho. And what I'm also, so just make sure it's curved nicely. M make sure you follow that line pretty nicely. You have to do this. So you could do this quickly. It's actually, so what you've done here, I've created a neck. Can you fit into my neck? Yeah, we'll find out. Yeah, so now you open it up. 
Oh, nice. It's a pretty wide neck. And then you could also use your, so you're just gonna, just gonna wear this in. And I could use a muffler around this. If you know it's very cold, you could use a muffler. And there you go. So what I'm gonna do later on basically, is because we actually don't have enough time, is make this into a fringe. So as you can see, this is what you have here. So basically, like I said, ponjos are just a piece of clothing that keep you warm and nice. So you could try this with any kind of fabric that you have. So imagine if, you know, some of these Ankara pieces that I cut off earlier on and I layer it on nicely on here. So I'm, because um, I can't seem to find my glue here, I'm just going to pin this up here quickly so that I can see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm going to do this here quickly. All right, so you have an idea of what it looks like. Oh, I didn't pin that actually. Okay, well, but at least you have an idea of what it looks like. And that's it on our life hack session for today. All right, I hope you've been able to learn something. So if you try this out, let us know. We just wrapped up the first hour of the show, people, there, but there's still so much more when we return. Stay with us. So guys, as you can see, yeah. MM has forced me really? into, this, forced you. into this poncho. Uh, you is, are is, the, is that what it's called? You are the official life hacks model. Official for, life hacks model. For the, in fact, for the past two weeks, you've been modeling All right, so if you, if you want to um, poncho, buy yeah. this. <laughs> as seen on TV. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, so, so if you call now, you can get one for uh, what? Five thousand now. <laughs> if you call now on the show, I'm not you can dealing. get it for five thousand. I'm not. But dealing. after the show, you know, uh, you, the rates go up. It, it goes up to like ten or fifteen thousand. So it's seven a.m. or seven oh one at yes, this point. Uh, Wake up Nigeria is still on and coming to you live from TVC Communications. Please note, we love to have fun. Yes, indeed. It's a show, show for fun lovers. So you never go wrong when you tune in. <laughs> Are you sure this is not an Agbada? It feels like an Agbada on yeah, It does, actually. Yeah, but it, it, does, it doesn't like look Dan too Shiki. bad on you. Like a Dan Shiki. Just in case you're wondering what his name is. Yes. Yeah, so, so I have this off-shoulder thing going His on. name is Yomi Owoku. Off-shoulder, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Titi Lai okay. Where It's live streaming right now yeah. on our website, tvcontinental.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Please send in those comments across all the social media platforms. Tell us what you really feel. Yeah, and let us use know, the actually. Hashtag. Mm -hmm. Wake up, Nigeria. <laughs> Don't forget, our app is uh, now available for download. It means that you can watch us live anywhere in the world mm -hmm. on uh, the Google Play Store and the Apple iStore as well. Yes, mm. indeed. Mm. Anywhere in the world, they can tell you what this looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Please note we have a chef in the studio. Okay. And of course, she is going to be doing us well. This ah, morning. Chef Ify is in the building. Yes, so. Hey, guys. Spice Hi, and Aroma Kitchen. Good morning. Yes, so morning. Chef um, Ify is joining us this yes. morning. Mm -hmm. And this morning, guys, she's making a fist, like a real fist. Ah, yes. looking forward to it. Yes, okay. I am looking forward to it as well. Welcome. Ah, wait. Thank you. Okay, maybe it's going to be one of those kind of meals you should plan for when you're trying to get back into a relationship after a breakup. Wow. <laughs> what am I talking Great. about? <laughs> oh, wow. Kitty. Anyway, wow. yeah, it's called a segue. Yeah. It's called a segue. She's talking yeah. about Damilo Laulu Atuimbo, yeah. who is an author <laughs> and relationship expert. And he's going to be talking about getting into a new relationship, especially after a recent breakup, scattering of things. Yes. So yeah. we've been talking about the art of the breakup for the past few weeks. And we're talking about finding new love after a major breakup. Yes, indeed. Now, nutrition this morning is focusing on staying nourished throughout the Ramadan period. And Susan Ajibade is back. 
She's of Splash Greens, and she will be highlighting some of the food options that are best for the iftar, especially for fasting Muslims. And then joining us for a performance is pop, Afro pop singer HDMI. This guy's got such a great voice. Now, Lulu will be joining us on the show this morning to tell us a thing or two about starting and sustaining a pigeon farm. Yes, indeed. It's, I'm curious. I'm really curious. Really? Uh, to know because I know that they <laughs> they make a real mess, pigeons. <laughs> on your car, yeah. <laughs> and we have another performance coming your way. We'll have German-raised, or rather German-based Nigerian singer Mikolo coming your way. <laughs> Lastly, we have uh, for health for you this morning, we have Dr. Lawson, who's going to be talking to us about hip pain and uh, why people have them. Mm. Uh, there are different kinds of people, uh, different sizes, yeah. and you know, different kinds of hip pain as well. Yeah. That's going to be talking to us about. That's an interesting one, really. Mm. Hips. Mm. And you know that whole line, hips don't lie. Why did that thing become a thing? <laughs> because it was in a song. Well, so it's, it's called a segue, really you know, just saying. Yeah. I just had to find something. Yeah, but but hips, hips don't lie, actually. How? They what, don't. What they actually see your hips, hips don't through. lie. What? <laughs> okay. Seriously. I, I know, I, I, well, so me becoming hippie happened later in life. <laughs> Like me. So <laughs> I've, I've told many people this thing before. When I was younger, I was like an ironing board. I was flat in front, flat at the back, mm. sideways, straight. I was a figure one. So this interesting in fact, female conversations that you guys have going on today. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, I'm let's sorry. move away from I it. just realized yeah. that, you know, it, make, it would have to make you, you know. So, okay, so is it the men folk yeah. that made it a thing? So when I was younger, you know, there was more reference in magazines, fashion magazines, about the slim woman, you know, very thin, hardly any meat on her body. Right. And then I get older and then find out that everybody's like, ooh, hips don't lie, ooh. I'm like, no, no the world? thing is, I, I think it depends on. I think it depends on where you live um, in the oh, world. In the world, okay. Yeah, so if you were, if, if you were in the Western, Western world, they, they still go for... The slimmer ones. Slimmer, thin women Are who look... Are you sure? Who look hungry, actually, <laughs> a lot okay. of the time. So, <laughs> but but didn't. in Africa, <laughs> but in Africa, uh, in Africa, it looks like men yeah. you know, you typically would like more. Um, okay, so that this actually reminds me of a joke Trevor Noah okay. um, cracked quickly. Okay. Yes, so he was talking about you know white women and black women and why he really appreciate. Actually, as much as he really loves white women, he also really likes black women. So for example, a white woman in a pool, she comes out, her water's all flowing down her skin. Yeah. She looks like, you know, she, her skin is being oiled. The water <laughs> just flows. Yeah. But a black woman comes out from her skin, from his, and she's all over the place, <laughs> like, <laughs> like she's struggling with the water. Okay. And I'm like, wow. Well, there's, so, there's not all white women that come out of pools looking all yeah. uh, I think he was just trying to I think find it was just trying to crack a joke because I, I've, I've seen a woman, a black woman and a white woman come out of the water and I thought the black woman looked fantastic. Okay. So, <laughs> I have so when I come out of the water, I'm going to look Halle Berry flawless things. just so you Some know. Halle Berry oh, yeah. Yeah. Move over to this yeah, kind of look. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I beg ah. that. Okay, we don't have any. We don't have anyone sending in comments yet about you know my my point. It's Your, fine. Please tell him how he and, looks. Uh, Be truthful. All right. So yes, with me in the kitchen this morning. Unfortunately, guys, we can't. Um, you know, of course, it's for those of you waiting for, you know, uh, to join our exercise routine. We can't do that this morning. But hey, we have something healthy to keep your mouth, you know, watery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this morning. Now, of course, we have Chef Ify this morning with me. And she's Hello. joining and she's making um, garden egg sauce, sauce with boiled yam and mm -hmm. plantain. So let's talk about the ingredients we're working with this morning. Okay, we're using our garden egg, of course. Yeah. And then we are boiling our plantain and yam already. Okay. So we have our onion, blended pepper, mm -hmm. tatasha, and then tomatoes. Yeah. And then have our more cow skin, and then smoked fish. Okay. Crayfish, seasoning cubes, salt, and vegetable oil. Palm oil, you mean? Palm oil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, I noticed earlier on you actually boiled up. Um, garden yeah, egg. Yeah, yeah. How, how long did you boil it for? Just for like five minutes. Okay. To soften it. Okay. 
and then we are about to grind it now. Yes. Okay. But you can so actually grind it without um, boiling it. Okay. So you that way. All right. Like I said earlier on, guys, uh, the recipe this morning is pretty healthy. I mean, you have on ripe plantains which we're working with and yeah. then we have garden, garden egg. egg and of course later on i'll be letting you in on the health benefits of garden egg but let's you know i actually thought i didn't realize how soft and easy it is to blend your garden egg after you boil it. Very, very easy. You can see yeah i actually didn't mean so when you said you're going to make use of a manual blender i was like uh okay <laughs> uh right right but hey i mean it's just like using the electrical blender yes no difference, no at, difference all. No. at all so let's talk about the process for you know making our garden egg okay um when the yam is cooked yeah. yes so we are going to be bleaching our palm oil, oil. <laughs> so after that i can do this for you while you're okay. explaining the all process right. yeah. thank you okay so after that our onion yeah and then the pepper will now fry for some minutes like okay. five ten minutes okay then every other thing goes in simple easy yeah it's yes. very, very 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 easy, easy yes. but you know there's actually a trick with making garden egg sauce a lot of people actually miss out on okay. which i have realized yeah it actually has a certain kind of taste so how do you know it's really ready because there are times where you eat your garden egg sauce and then fresh. yeah exactly it has that fresh taste and it doesn't That's really taste boil first Oh, okay. Yes. Well, some people actually really boil first, and then it has that taste that mm. it gives. Like if, if you so. when you boil it, mm. so there is tendency for the taste to reduce while you fry. Okay. So you still have to fry a bit, not just put and then put it down. Okay. Yes. So, so you have to keep frying for yes, how and long? Yes, you test when something is ready, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just just keep tasting. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to. Thank and then you. for your um, pepper and tomatoes, do you yes. have to use tomatoes or just pepper? Or? You can use anyone. Okay. You can use just pepper, you can use tomatoes, tatashi. Yeah. And then blend everything. Blend everything up. Yeah, just for the little color. Okay. Yes. All right. So just in case you're just joining us, guys, this morning, we are making garden egg sauce. I know, right? Hmm. These days, I don't even know when the rain comes in. And your, on your screen right there are the ingredients. Mm. The rest, the, this recipe is pretty easy, easy. very but simple, right now, and very affordable too. Season. What do you say? Garden egg is not in season. Oh, it's not? So I have to look. Are you serious? Ooh, I so, didn't know that. Yes, it's not I just thought it was. No wonder they're so tiny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you went to the farm to pluck them today. I, I am to. going to make an excess on the yes. show, which is all oh, nice, yes. nice. And well, um, this is quite... An affordable meal, actually, because yes, I mean that the eggs affordable. are very, very, very cheap. Cheap, yes. Very cheap. It's not affordable, easy. It's not um, hard to healthy. find and very healthy as well. Yes. Yeah. And then we have our ripe plantain there, which is another, you know, healthy. Um, Can I do that? Meal. Oh, okay, great. So, oh shoot, sorry about that. You know, this actually looks like um, like you're making um, a father stew. Yes. With a green pepper. Yes. Instead of, well, well, in this case, we're making use of garden egg. All right. So maybe right now what we should do, because we would like all our viewers, you know, to make sure they are a part of every process we are making here in the kitchen. So I think I'll just move this over here okay. and then we can get our sauce ready right okay okay so i'm just gonna you want to use this pan yes i'll use it okay so i'm just gonna throw this water away all right great stuff happening here on wake up nigeria if you're just joining us in the kitchen this morning we are making that in egg sauce with bald yam oh, and plantain. unripe plantain as you can see here our yam and unripe plantain is boiling already it's gonna come it's gonna get really soft in a bit yes. yeah yeah okay and so we are going to heat up our pan. But like I said earlier on, we actually want you to, you know, be a part of everything we are making, like the entire process of what we are making in the kitchen this morning. But we'll have to go on a quick break, people. When we return, there's more on the show. Stay with us. Welcome back. So uh, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about uh, different parts of the body and the kind of pains we might experience and the reasons why. Last week, we talked about um, your feet, your ankles. And uh, the previous week, we talked about something else, you know, shoulder pain and, and different things like that. Today, we're going to be talking about the hips. 
Um, sometimes, maybe as you grow older, you could have pains in the hips. Uh, for others, it could be because of their size or maybe during pregnancy, so different things like that. We have Dr. Lawson joining us uh, to give us the, the lowdown of, of hip pain. And thank you very much for what you've been um, doing for us over the past few weeks and talking about different parts of the body and lifestyle changes that people might need to make. Um, it depends on the case. Now, this week, it's about the hips. And usually people attribute this a lot to women um, of a certain age or maybe women that have had children and that maybe there was an issue while they were having kids. So, but talk to us in general about hip pain and uh, the things what we should focus on uh, this week. Okay, good morning and thank you for having me. Hip pain cuts across all age ranges mm -hmm. from kids to adults to the elderly. So everybody can have hip pain. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing is um, not every cause of hip pain is something very severe or worrisome like arthritis, or maybe having had a road traffic accident or trauma to that. Mm. Sometimes, like we mentioned earlier in previous episodes, overuse, if you run, uh, you don't proper technique, you don't exercise properly, you could actually stress the muscles mm. around the hip. So uh, for a lot of people, that is usually what happens. Mm. But then um, there are various subsets of um, complaints around the hip that will go with different ages. So for kids, generally what we see in kids tends to be when kids tend to be very big or mm. obese. Right. And that can actually lead to a condition in the hip that can be severe enough that sometimes they may need some, some surgery for wow. it. Even for, even for kids? Yes, even wow. for kids, okay. uh, usually between the ages of 9 and 15. So watching your weight, and uh, if you've noticed, there's a recent upsurge in kids being obese. overweight and yeah, obese. Yeah, yeah. So it does have an implication for the hip in kids. Mm. So, so, so what you're saying is that um, being heavier in the upper part of the body then affects the lower part of the body, including well, the hips? Yeah, for kids. Mm. For, kids for kids, because okay. um, they're still growing. So and there's a particular portion around their hips that's a bit weak. So it's more like too much weight stresses that particular part and can lead to a complaint in the hip. Mm. Mm. For the others, for, I mean, uh, pregnant women may have, probably because of their weight and the baby, more strain uh, on, on the hips. And they also have some conditions also as a consequence of pregnancy that affects how the blood supply to the hip comes, comes about. Yeah, so it's easy to see how um, you can deal with the one for kids. So maybe try to get the kids to change their diet and you probably have surgery in some, in some extreme cases. But for pregnant women, what are the things that they should look out for and the things that they should do to even reduce the pain? Well, um, exercise, move around more frequently. Um, even, even when it's painful? <laughs> yes, mm. active rest is good. Okay. So in fact, if you become inactive, it tends to make it worse. Oh, because okay. the muscles just get comfortable and then when you now want to now mm. move them, they're a bit reluctant to move. Mm. So the, the pain will now be as a result of attempting to initiate movement and not because it is now movement induced. Right, right. So, but if you keep moving, it improves blood supply. We're not saying go and run the marathon or jog in the national stadium, but then at least regular activity, move around and that would help. Okay. okay. Now, one other group um, is cyclers. They also tend to have a lot, uh, tend to have hip pain because uh, as a consequence of the red cells not being able to take oxygen properly, mm. they have um, a clog in the blood supply and can have issues with their hips. With the hips. Okay. Know? Okay, yes. And then, of course, they say the hips don't lie, but sometimes hip pain could also be referred pain from some other part of the body. From the back, lower back. Right. What okay. uh, people would say, your waist. Mm. So people come with waist pain. It may actually be your lower back that is hurting. Sometimes it's referred to the hip. Mm. So for every hip complaint, you should bear at the back of your mind that there's a possibility it could be from the lower back. Mm. Now, so a lot of these things, um, a lot of the ones you've mentioned now are 
um, some of some things that require lifestyle changes and things like that. Of course, for sicklers, this is a condition that they have to deal with uh, probably for the rest of their lives. Uh, but are there specific hip pains that are the cause of a disease? Hmm. Not really. The way to look at it is more often than not, pain is a symptom of something that's already going on in the background. Right. But like I said earlier, it's not every time that there's a, there's a disease problem going on. Usually it may just be a tendinitis, the muscles are, you know, overused, overstretched mm. or stressed. Or just because you're not exercising enough and you decide that, okay, you're going to be a weekend warrior today. I'm going to <laughs> dribble everybody out. Yeah. You've not gone to the field for like a month and right. then you now go. So you'll be sore afterwards mm. and that can give you some pain. Let's talk about the older generation. So, um, of course, when people get older, maybe the late 50s into their 60s, into their 70s, you will usually hear a lot of complaints about hips. So what do older people do to just ensure that they maintain a proper, for lack of a better word, hip health? Okay. Um, okay. Let's dodge ageism. Mm. Uh, I don't believe in getting old, <laughs> okay. but, but the reality is as you age, changes happen in the body. Yeah. Now, um, your bones get weaker, your muscles are not as strong, which now even makes it more pertinent for you to be active the older you get, mm. because that's the only way you can get your muscles to be firmer, your bone health to be, to be get better, yeah. because the more the muscles work, the bones have to be stronger to accommodate that. Right. Right. Now, of course, uh, vitamin D becomes very important as in exposure to sunlight and then vitamin D supplements. Hmm. Vitamin D regulates your calcium metabolism, which is essential for bone. Right. So if you're taking your vitamin D regularly and you're eating appropriately, you get enough calcium into your system, makes your bone stronger, and can forestall a lot of um, hip-related or bone-related issues as you get older. Mm. Uh, I think the challenge has been that um, as one gets older, you also, it also coincides with the time that you also probably are more successful at work. Mm. So you're not doing as much physically as previously. Yeah, you're so, just a bit more sedentary. Yeah? You don't move exactly, around. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So and that also takes its toll on the body. So the, the motto should be the older you get, the more you should move around. Mm. Dance, have fun, live life. Wow. So life starts so at 50. That will, yeah, life starts at 50. So uh, that would be a good recommendation to, to other people. Just make sure that you're moving. And it doesn't have to be even, you know, really f um, vigorous um, nah. activity. Just, you know, just be on the move. Be on the move. Be consistent about it, persistent, and enjoy yourself. Do something you enjoy doing. All right, so let's talk about surgery. Um, uh, for whether it's for the older generation, because we hear a lot about hip replacement surgeries and all of that. Now, for children, though, which you mentioned earlier, um, if, there, if there's a need for, for a surgery, will it be this kind of intrusive surgery, or is it something else, is something that is a bit more simple? Okay, well, for hip pain and the condition I mentioned earlier, more often than not, it's not something really, it's not something major. Mm, okay, okay. Okay, it's not something major. So, more, more it's, uh, you don't really even need to make a, a, a big scar, just a little thing uh, wiring just to ensure that it stays in the position it should stay. Oh, right, okay. However, um, hip replacement would be a surgery that is done for people that have intractable pain hmm. as a consequence of a pathology in the hip. So, and the emphasis is intractable pain. Whatever you do, the pain doesn't go it affects their quality of life. Hmm. So you need to intervene so that they're able to live life again, you know, be able to sleep without bothering about sleep, um, without bothering about pain, move around, go to church, see friends, without yeah. really going like, oh, I cannot walk this far without being in pain. Yeah. Now, one of the things that um, uh, you, you spoke about earlier is the fact that you could, uh, some people, there are certain people that can have a hip condition as a result of an accident. Yeah. And some people have to live through this process even after uh, maybe they can walk and you know, they just find out that, okay, there's this steady pain that they have. Uh, what lifestyle changes will they need to make? Let's say I want to avoid surgery or anything like that because it's too expensive or it's too intrusive or I have to travel or whatever. How do I then manage to ensure that um, consistently I'm free of pain or at least I can mitigate it to a greater measure and not rely too much on painkillers? Okay, um, usually the first step would be for you to be properly assessed by your doctor to tell you 
when and if you absolutely need surgery. Mm. If it can't be delayed, then the advice would be for you to get some physical rehab. So get some exercises under your belt and do them regularly. Get the muscles stronger so that they can share the load across the hip joints. And if you're not loading the hip joint as much, it will be less painful. Mm. Control your weights. So weight reduction also matters. Very important. Because yeah. that will now reduce the load across the hip. Avoid activities that will put a strain on the hip. You know, so if you're going to run, make sure you're, you've trained, you've done your stretches. Anything that is going to put you under, uh, put the hip under strain, mm. try and avoid. And that can postpone the evil day. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lawson, for, uh, for talking to us about hips. We, we, we did take quite a, quite a while mm. to capture all, all the different age groups and all of that, but I think we've done justice to it. Yes, we have. Really, really good. All right, man. Welcome back. It's Wake Up Nigeria. And of course, we're here in the kitchen with Chef Ify. Of life. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right, this morning we are making garden egg sauce with boiled yam and unripe plantain. And you're on your screen right there are the ingredients, people. I hope you're paying attention. I hope you have your pen and paper and you're scribbling down those ingredients. Okay, so Chef Ify, let's get to where we are right now. Let's talk about ingredients first, though. Again? Yeah. Okay. Our, we are using our garden eggs. Yeah, which uh, we've blended already. Yes, boiled yeah. and blended. Yeah. Then we are using our smoked fish. Pomo, tomatoes, onion, mm -hmm. palm oil, and then these are onion and then um, plantain. Right plantain yes. yes, ripe and unripe. Oh yeah. Miss, okay. Yes. And our crayfish, salt, seasoning cube. All right, great. So okay, it. so right now we are so well. Basically, we, I'm sure we all know how to boil yam. No, <laughs> I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know how to do that. But well, just in case you don't know yeah. how to, yeah, just wash it's it just and to put wash it in water. your yam and your red right <laughs> and just put it in what put it in a pot of water I'll and put it, a little you know, salt if you want to. Yeah, you know. All right, so over to our garden egg sauce. So what yes. we have done with our palm oil is to bleach it. Yeah. Yes, a bit. All right, and then we added a. Uh, Onions. Onions. And now the blended peppers. Mm. Okay, so guys, Chef Ify is one of those chefs who <coughs> likes onions. And, and you lots. really need to see the kind of... Man, those are your many, wow. Like, all that onion flavor yeah, in this meal is going to be delicious. Whatever is just eat it because when it goes, you look for it. Right. <laughs> right, you're looking for the onions. Uh, you look for it. <laughs> this little one, like they will tell you. Ha. So now that it's in season, just... Exactly. Oh, eat, yeah. Eat I'm telling you. And yeah. And I really hope that, well, so, well, just in case you haven't, you know, um, been watching, I hope you are watching now. But hey, talking about farming, which of course we'll be showing later on on the show, we have, we have previous episodes where we actually taught people how to, you know, you know, farm with onions, like, you know, learn how to cultivate onions in your backyard it's pretty easy but you can check out check out our previous episodes for some of those ones before onions quickly go out of yes, <laughs> season and then they are so expensive, expensive yes all right so i see that you've added our crayfish yes all right so, so just we're just to going to okay. fry a bit okay and then we'll add the other ingredients the story, smoked, fish. smoked fish okay so we're adding the cow oh. skin and it's supposed to be a bit thick okay hard so so that it Softens, boils with the yeah, boils with tomatoes. It, yes. Oh, great. Our tomato puree, actually. All right. So quickly, before we move over to the next segment, guys, I actually wanted to give you some health info on um, garden eggs. So garden eggs are like very, 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 very healthy, guys. So it helps, it helps with your eye vision. It helps with your, bro if you have bronchitis, it actually helps with that. It also has anti-cancer agents mm. in them also. And very high in vitamin K, which helps to, you know, prevent blood clotting. It also helps prevent liver disorder. So guys, I know it's not in season, but hey, when it merely comes back like this, just wash oh, the market. Very good Boom. for the heart. And go and buy your garden egg. And yes, very good for the heart as well. Yes, so we are making garden egg sauce. Our yam and a ripe planting is ready. But we have to move over right now for some relationship talk with Titi and Dami Lola Oluwatoibo. Hey guys. Yes, indeed. Now this particular topic has been hot online, offline, in the studio. We're always talking about it. Uh, we have Dami Lola Oluwatoibo back 
for a relationship discussion. Now he's an author, relationship expert, and so much more. The topic right now is getting into a relationship, a new relationship, especially after a recent breakup. So we have been talking a lot about breakups when it's right to, when you figured out it's right for you to break up. Yep. The art of the breakup. Yep. Uh, moving on. Moving on after the breakup. And um, so this is when you've gone past that and you want to get into another relationship. Absolutely. So, Ask Dami. That's the hashtag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do it's, we start? It's been an exciting series yeah. and um, people are giving loads of very good feedback because mm. it's very practical, right? Yeah. So I think the very first thing is, you know, I'm out of the relationship. Yeah. I've admitted it. I'm not living in denial. Mm. Now, the next thing is not for me to have a rebound. Okay. Revenge or a reactionary relationship because what happens is people are feeling or many times people feel a part of me is gone Okay, so I need to fill it up at all costs Okay, and that's where people end up getting involved with people with other people that they would never have looked at okay. If things were still going well with them hmm. So you need that time and that space to heal to rediscover who you are in terms of your esteem in terms of your identity, you know, all of a sudden you're no longer Shalas' girlfriend or Ngozi's boyfriend or um, and that became an identity for the person. Yes. Yeah, it does. I, yeah. I think and on the family I, front, yeah. on social media as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you're not posting those pictures. Ah, you don't know, Shola, <laughs> babe. You know, that, that thing, it, it becomes an identity. Absolutely. Yeah. So, who are you really now? Mm. That requires time, that requires space, and it varies for different people. So, there's no rule like, okay, you should be over this by now. It's mm. been three months. Mm. Some people need six months to heal, some people need two years mm. to heal. But no matter uh, the degree or the amount of time, take that time to find yourself. Mm -hmm. So some people want to ask the question, okay, should I look for somebody or should somebody look for me? Um, I think just wait for you to get to you first, okay. right? Come back to yourself and then you can begin to build so from you, there. So you find yourself. Yes. So I guess once you find yourself, you yourself will probably look more attractive. Definitely, right? because confidence is so attractive. Mm. Um, you know, confidence is from the Latin with faith, as in confidant, oh, wow. with faith. And that yeah. means that you have an outlook of health, of wholesomeness for the future. Mm. You're no longer dealing with that fragmented soul where you're just <laughs> all over the place yeah. trying to find some kind of support. And that is very attractive in and of itself because now there is boldness, there's confidence, and as they will say, the confidence is the best makeup. So there is that uh, anxiety. I w should I use the word fear? Yeah. Of getting into a relationship or even finding someone else as good as the person that uh, you, in quote, left yes. or lost, you know. Um, and or the person that lost you. Or the person that lost you. <laughs> And then if, for instance, you feel or ever felt like something you did was wrong, how do you now react when this, par this new partner comes along? All right, so one of the first things that I like to tell people is that there are 7.2 billion people on Earth. Okay. Yeah, so I think it's very limiting for you to feel, I've lost the best man ever. Mm -hmm. you, you thought he was the best person based on the number of people you were exposed to, okay. based on the context in which you operate. And you know how they say that every father, everybody's father's house is the biggest until they travel. Mm. Yeah, so the first time you traveled, left your country, there was a new level of awareness and expansion. So have the faith that there is somebody else somewhere who has those qualities or maybe similar qualities or even a better presentation mm. um, on the whole. Now, <laughs> the other thing is for you to say to yourself, how can I be the best for myself and whoever I'm going to end up with? Okay. Yeah. Um, you can't control everybody, but you can control yourself, your habits, your appetite, your attitudes, your disposition, your outlook. You can invest in yourself. So make yourself a project where you're consistently investing in and then believe that eventually when you see that person is going to be value upon value. Mm. But then I've invested so much in building myself. Maybe I started a business with all that negative energy. I decided, oh, you know what? I'm going to go into a business. I'm going to be on flick. I'm going to always look amazing. As a result of the breakup. Yeah, as a result okay. of the breakup. Yeah. And then you meet someone who probably is not even really interested in your business, doesn't really care, <laughs> you know, but the person ticks all the boxes. Yeah. You know, so am I, in quote, diminishing myself for this person? 
-hmm. Now, if the person is not in support of your business, mm -hmm. then I'm not sure we can say the person ticks all the boxes. Okay. Because you might have to choose between what you believe is your business, your mm -hmm. vocation, and the value placed on that relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's where compromise comes in. Am I willing to let go of this business? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to say, well, let me just wait a bit longer until mm -hmm. the person who can support my business comes in. Okay. But then it's oftentimes a trade-off as well because you're thinking, okay, would you do that if you were 35 and you really wanted mm -hmm. to get married? Um, so compromise comes into the mm. picture, but I think number one, finding yourself, your identity, and then your purpose. Now the business could be a vehicle to fulfill your purpose, yeah. but it could also be the purpose in and of itself. So sometimes we get attached to vehicles um, in the name of them being the destination. Yeah. If it's just a vehicle, then it possibly means that he's doing something else that you can partner with him on okay. or her on as the case may be. And eventually what you're trying to get through the business, mm. you still get. Through the that, partner, with exactly, the partner. Exactly, yes. Okay. So that's compromise. Okay, then uh, there are some, you know, people that when they meet someone in, and they want to start a relationship, maybe they had education goals. Maybe they had plans for a certain number of kids. <laughs> I mean, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So differences. Yes. They seem different to you now because of what happened in the last relationship. Maybe the yeah. reason why you had to leave that person is because the person didn't want children and you want wow. a thousand, you yeah. know? Um, a thousand is a big word, but <laughs> you understand where I'm going as yeah. quickly as possible. How do we address that? All right, so you need to, one of the things, I, and I've said it on this show so many times, communication is key, it's the lifeblood of relationships. And the fact that somebody is saying, you know, right now I don't want children, doesn't mean they will never want children okay. again. Why? Because many of our decisions are rooted in our time of life, okay. in the season of life. So a, a lady at 21 thinks differently from when she's uh, 35, or thinks differently by the time she's 35. A, a man at 27, will think differently uh, when it's 45. Mm. So can you revisit the conversation again, try to find out why you're saying you don't want children? Yeah. Did you have a bad experience or maybe your brother or sister had a nasty mm. experience with childbirth yeah. or post-childbirth uh, complications? Then once you found out what that issue is, mm. find out is there something that we can do to change this mm. or are we, are we stuck? Is mm. it a cul-de-sac? All right, so there's so many uh, different issues we can address when it comes to starting a relationship after a breakup. Hopefully you can share with us uh, what your experience was like. Please talk to us on social media. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria. Thank you so much. Uh, hashtag AskDami, hashtag WakeUpNigeria. Please send us a message as soon as you can. We have to wrap this up here, but I know you'll be back next week. Yeah. Uh, we'll be continuing and wrapping up this particular topic, hopefully, when it comes to breakups. We have. Hello once again, and we're still here. Mm -hmm. We're doing nothing but ensuring that we give you everything yeah. the best. And if you just got out of a relationship, mm. <laughs> go back to church. <laughs> That's my advice to you. Wow. Go and okay. report yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Nigerians deserve nothing but the best. Uh, Wake Up Nigeria is the only show that can give you yeah. the very best. My name is Yomi Ope. And I'm Titi Laya Oni. So, and amazingly, I did go back to church after a solid ah, breakup. I did. And it helped me. Yeah, that's, but, that's, um, that's all you need. It did. But really, <laughs> MM is we, laughing. We, need to, we need to tell you something. We yeah. need to give you some education. We, we, had, we have experts that come in to help deal with these issues. And hopefully, uh, Dami will be back next week to talk about that more. But we're streaming live tvcontinental.tv and on Facebook Live at TVC Connect. Please mm. stay right there if you have to go somewhere. Uh, take a handheld device with you <laughs> and download that app. Yes, indeed. Uh, both on the Google Play Store and the Apple iStore. Store. You can watch us anywhere in the world. Now, something is happening in the kitchen. I, I'm liking that garden egg. <laughs> okay. I like garden egg sauce. So... You MM, do? And, MM and Chef Ify. Yummy, you do? Yes, I do. Okay. Garden egg sauce. <laughs> I'll tell you a secret later on. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. About what garden egg can do for your health. Ah, ah. 
I already had like, you know. Yeah, he, he two actually eggs stole a few. So I, I like <laughs> the garden egg itself as like a fruit, as a snack. But in the sauce, I'm not a humongous no, fan. Ah, Trust me, sauce see, is if it's made there. properly, you would love it. It's very, it's very good. Nice. Tomato was expensive some years ago. <laughs> you know, everybody was like, just use garden egg now. I'm like, wow. Are you serious? Yeah, I love people oh, okay. saying that online. But um, it's one of those things you need to take note of. But we also want you to learn something about making an extra stream of income. Yeah, indeed. And pigeon farming is something that you should look into. Lulu is going to be here joining us to talk to us about how to take on this venture. Mm, yes, indeed. Pigeon farming. Yeah. Interesting. Then after that, we have a musical performance coming your way. Mikolo is going to join us with his single, Arewa. Now, nutrition this morning is uh, focused on staying nourished throughout the Ramadan period. And Susan Ajibadi of Splash Greens uh, will be uh, highlighting some of the food options that are best for the iftar, especially uh, during the season of fasting for Muslims. Yes, indeed. Now, so, what, Titi, you went for deliverance. I didn't, I didn't say I went for deliverance. She just went back. It sounded, it sounded like, so, it sounded like so, you went okay, for so deliverance. This is, so this is me after two and a half years in a very, very serious relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, and apart, so my roommate in, in Unilag then actually also had a serious breakup at the same time. Mm. Okay. So we're bunk mates. And every night we get up and we cry together. Oh, are you serious? And then... After crying for about, let's say, three, four days, we started praying together. Are you serious? Yeah. Praying so, to so get over her, the her relationship? Her relationship breakup was really serious. Ah. She was dating someone for six plus years. Ooh. And, you know, it, it, it ended really abruptly. And mine was two and a half years and I was feeling like, I knew how I was feeling, not to talk of her. So at the point, so let's say it happened on a Wednesday, Sunday, we're in church, man. Yeah. <laughs> We were in church. That's what you need. That, that's, so yeah. we were doing a lot of praying together and it actually helped, but uh -huh. I had a companion in it, you know, so I, someone that who was feeling my pain, I was feeling her pain and would pray. So I had a companion. So I, I didn't go through it alone, which was, you know, maybe God's way of saying, look, girl, there's so much you can achieve in this life. You still have friends. You still have family. Yeah, I'm saying get off for, your behind. Went for deliverance. Yeah, <laughs> get off your behind. Deliverance now. And you know, stop Pastor, stopping. pray for me. Pray for me. Yeah. I just yeah. got over yeah. a relationship. I don't know no, if no. I've mentioned it before, but do you know that it's been scientifically proven mm. that having faith in some kind Something. of religion mm. can help you pull through yeah. a tough situation? Yeah, like, true. Scientifically. Yeah, true. All those people true. that say, oh, science uh, and religion don't act. Yes, they might not necessarily, you know, be outspokenly interwoven. Yeah. But it has been scientifically proven Very true. that having faith in something, especially in a higher being or yeah, you know, some or kind believing of faith, in or something, believing in something yeah. can help you pull can through actually, yeah. a yeah. very terrible I, um, I've period. I spoke to pastor about it like later, this is like three months later. Mm. And so it, it was just the companionship, the prayer, it was like meditation. I'm one, of those few, I'm one of those people who <laughs> do not know how to depend on people. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So es you wouldn't tell your friend Especially everything. emotionally. Okay. Right. So yeah, I would tell, I would share a part of me with you, mm. but I wouldn't depend on you to the extent that if you leave my life, uh, You're not I'll not go to completely. church to pray so that <laughs> I get it black. Well, <laughs> hey, I think it happens. I think it's time for us to take <laughs> No, no, it's not time for us to take the news. And then we're still, <laughs> and then we're still talking about her. Okay, okay. How she's super woman. Joke, I like our broco too much, Mary. We should go. You're welcome again. It's still Wake Up Nigeria and it's time for us to talk nutrition. And of course, I have Susan Ajibadi of Splash Greens right here with Hello, me. Hello, Mary. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Fantastic. Now, um, as at um, last week, yeah. uh, we discussed uh, food to eat during Ramadan. Yes, yes. To aid the fasting. Yeah. Uh, so today we are kind of like narrowing it down. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about iftar. iftar. Okay, yeah. great. The um, food that I eat take when you you're breaking the fast you know uh, naturally people get to have issues with prepping meals you know coming up with timetable what to eat especially for the family if you're single it's very easy you can decide to eat in at night or not but then particularly for this period there's some food that I have written down here 
that could help you to plan to you know eat well ideal meal and they're very very healthy so like i mentioned last week about dates i talked about dates yes, for you breaking did. your fast and water you could also have that with milk too as well then so my ideas is fruit so I, we, we we showed people some samples of fruit salad and all last week so your fruit is still very intact those are the things you can eat you can uh, create a timetable with this then i have your soup and when i say soup i don't mean your um normal food nigerian soups okay. but like pepper soup broccoli oh, soup okay. carrot soup something that you can um Drink. take with your spoon okay. or something yeah and the very popular one that we have here in nigeria pepper soup everybody knows whatever form so of pepper, pepper soup, soup is yes it's good yes for iftar maybe before your proper meal okay. you can have a soup if you're too hungry you can have it alongside with um or this uh, bread, okay. this or this small bread, or echo uh, agidi. Yeah. You know, yes, you can you can do that for your iftar. Another idea that I have here is okay. I'd like to mention something about. I said it last week that people should stay away from fried foods and foods with lot of sugar. If you do that during iftar, you might not even have that strength to wake up for your suho the next morning. Okay. You know, so you have to stay away as much as you can for foods that are fried. You can indulge in some probably in between uh, five days or something. Another food that you can take is mama and pap, the popular mama and pap. Then yam portage, they are foods that are very, very good and highly nutritious for yam iftar. Portage. Yam, yam portage, yes, okay. it's very good because people will think, okay, is it all about fruit, vegetable for your iftar? No, the all because you I remember need to, someone yes. tweeted uh, and, said, and I said, <laughs> we should not eat again. <laughs> <laughs> no, all we're saying is your meal should be as balanced as, as as possible mm. have your grains have your protein your carbohydrates you know very very good and balanced uh, meal yeah yam porridge then like let's go back to that you don't have to stay away from your swallows your swallows are still very valid they are valid okay, ones so i can have my six wraps yeah of fufu. Mm -mm. No, don't no. go overboard mary you said we can go back to our swallow <laughs> you can take your swallow but in portion you, you don't take more that. you <laughs> said <laughs> you can go back and uh, see don't buy Do more than you can chew worker, yeah and mm. i need the extra energy energy i've been working all day no, then you don't have to overshoot your stomach. You know, just take the portion that you think. All of these things, when you eat Some them, people's portions your, body, are six wraps. your body takes what it needs and the rest is waste. That's when you start getting bloated, you start adding excess fat, you start, that's, you know, you just have to portion control. Mary, portion control. You, you are not even, you see, you don't understand. <laughs> For me, yeah. and I want to take a wrap yeah. of fufu. Mm -hmm. But for some people, a standard meal is six wraps six of wrap. fufu. How can Should they go ahead and have it for how, iftar? How can your standard meal be six wraps of fufu? If, if that oh, works for you. Have you been to Apapa? <laughs> have you been to a construction site? Mary. Okay, this is but turning Mary. to a <laughs> But really, <laughs> just, just take what, what works for you. Eat, don't eat because you want to eat it because you need it, you feel hungry and you have satisfied that hunger. Irrespective of that, do not overload yourself with food. I think that answers. That's fine. That's <laughs> Thank fine. you, Maria. All right, let we me mention let me mention the foods option, Eba with elastic but food options, oh, nice. Amala with Beguri and way oh, you can indulge fantastic. yourself with that. Then pounded yam with egusi soup, tuo with ogbono, fufu with bitter leaf soup. You can have that on your table for a <laughs> and your family would love it. Then I also wrote that the almighty jollof rice. Ah, <laughs> now you are talking. You know, I've been listening to you since, like, uh -uh. No, you've spoken. Yeah, jollof rice, rice is good Ita. food. Yes, great for yes, it. Uh, properly garnish, maybe alongside with some vegetable salad. Let there be greens. Let it be colorful. It's not the so type of okay. jollof. You're making people hungry. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not the type of jollof we so do much, in school. All right. Thank you so much. We'll definitely continue this All discussion. All right. Thank it's you, been Mary. Fantastic talking about this. Thank you. All right. So we are moving on uh, straight to the garden where Titi is on standby with the pigeon farmer teaching us another way to do things. Okay, all right, so I was hearing some pigeon sounds from my left, wondering, are their friends calling them? No, they're not, but they're very active in this cage. Yes, it's time for our farming segment, and I have 
have Lulu here, who is a farmer, and she is the CEO of Lulu Farms. Now, Lulu Farms is in Iba, am I right? Yes, of course, it is. All right, welcome to the show. Thank so, you. So, pigeon farming, a lot of people have been asking throughout today, like, really, pigeons? They farm pigeons? Uh, so, can you tell us how it all started? Um, actually, it all started as a passion. While growing up, uh, we do have this um, local chicken, um, okay, shall I say? So, so you had local chickens as a child? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we do train a local chicken and I was so passionate about it. I always care for them, make sure they are well fed, give them medication. Okay. Was it your parents that... Was it your parents that yes, of course. were yes, telling it you was. to do all these things? No, it was not there, but it, I just have a, a special passion for, uh, for, for Lulu. the... Lulu, Lulu, yes. I have to say I'm really impressed with what you've achieved. I've actually read up on you and yeah. I've been a fan for a while. Yeah. And she's brought some of her pigeons here today. Can you tell us about these pigeons? What do you have here? Oh, these are pigeons. Uh, what type of pigeons? These pigeons are called feral pigeons. Feral pigeons? pigeons okay, yes. I can see there's one that yes. looks very white here. There's these white and black pigeons, but okay. the pure white pigeons are called the uh, domestic pigeon. Okay, so yes. there's no pure white pigeon? Yes, uh, no, 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 it's in the farm. I didn't bring them along. Okay, can you tell me the type of people that buy pigeons like this? Oh, mostly people do buy them for as pets. Okay. Some prayer homes do use it. Okay. And some Families too do buy it for home consumption. Families? Yes, yes. Some okay. individuals, some families, even some restaurants do buy it okay. based on special demand from their customer, based okay. on the health benefit of pigeon meat, even the bones, the liver. Hmm. Yes, yes. I've heard about pigeon livers before. Yes. Uh, a lot of, so some people sell it like 100 at a go. Yes. I, it, it scares me that 100 pigeons had to die for, for all those livers liver, and all that. But, course. Okay, so now a lot of people have probably not thought of this before. How many did you start with when you started farming? Actually, when I started pigeon farming, I started with just five. Five? Five birds. Okay. Yes. Okay. But whenever I have high demand and there's like, Wow, I can't meet up. I, I meet my other pigeon farmers, Okay. buy from them, and I do the supply. So when I see that, wow, there's business in this, there's high demand, okay. I have to like establish a bigger home. Okay. Um, yes, I have to. So you started with five pigeons, yes. and now how many do you have? I have about 1,000 pigeons. 1,000 pigeons? Yes, of course. So the, the pigeon coop, actually, I know it's a chicken coop. Yes, it's Is called it Coops. Is it called a coop, right? Yes. So is it the same as what a chicken coop would look like? Of course. The same type of cage? Yes, yes, All yes, right? yes. But the food that they eat is different from what chickens eat, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, so uh, I can see you're holding yes, something. Yes, this is an example of what pigeons do eat. This is called this, this spinach. Spinach? Just yes. Just ordinary yes, spinach yes. like what I eat? Of course, but you have to chop them. Okay. Yeah. All right, so once you chop the spinach, the birds will eat it. Yes. So if I leave that, I'll leave that right there on top. Mm -hmm. So just ordinary spinach that you see in the market. Yes, but then you, you gave me this earlier. There's some sort of seeds. Can you tell me what sort of seeds these are? Oh, these are grains. We have the corn, the millet, okay. the wheat. Okay. Yes, okay. because pigeons love grains more. Okay. Yes, and they do eat insects too. Insects? Yes, of course they do. What sort of insects? Like ants? Or? Yes, ants, but not as much as they do with grains and veggies. Okay, yes. all right then. So now, with a thousand birds, you are you looking to expand even more or are you okay with your 1,000 well, birds? Of course, I'm not okay. I'm looking for expansion. Okay. To expand, yes. Okay. And it, it won't cost a lot of money to do that. How much is one bird? One bird is sold for 700. Wow. Yes. But the domestic birds are more expensive. Okay. Yeah, due to its purpose. Okay. That one is sold for like 1,000. Okay, so now, based on that, that means you have quite a lot of um, birds that could get you quite a lot of money. But then, when it comes to laying of eggs, how many eggs do they lay in like a day or a week? No, they are, one thing about pigeons, they are just like human beings. Okay. And they don't lay like the normal bird. Oh, they okay. are, Yes, the maximum that they can lay is two. Or in a week or in no, a month? No, in general, yes. Overall, just two? Yes, they'll just lay just two eggs wow. and incubate it. Wow. Yes, and 
Okay. It's ashes after 18 stroke, 19 days. You know what? Yeah. You've been amazing, Lulu. I'm so proud of you. I've watched you grow this. And uh, hopefully people will be looking out for you as well at Lulu Farms. And if you're ever looking for pigeons, this is them right there. I've seen them firsthand and they look very healthy and really beautiful as well. We have to rush back into the studio now. Wake Up Nigeria continues. Now we give you the very best of music on Wake Up Nigeria. You know that already. And Mikolo is a German-based Nigerian artist who started this year with the release of his single, Ariwa, and Ginger Me and Amokwe, which were both released last year and also saw some uh, considerable success. And he's joining us on the show today. Uh, this guy right here, he's, he's talented and, uh, you know, he's a big deal in Germany. And we love him in Nigeria because, you know, he, he's very, very connected to his roots. Because thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. Thank Good you, to see you, man. Nice one, nice one, nice one. I love this uh, leather jacket that you have going. Oh, now, um, music in Europe, uh, by comparison to music in, in Nigeria, yeah. we're just talking now, and, and you said that what you have noticed and some of your other uh, colleagues in, in Europe have noticed is that Afrobeat yeah. is gaining a lot of traction in Europe. So talk to us about that. Yeah. Oh, Afrobeat is really like walking really far right now in Europe. Mm. Like the European people, they only know, like, the, the kind of music they know is only this techno music. Yeah, the techno kind of Just club music, yeah. Club and, like and yeah. move. But right now, they're hearing a beat similar to techno, switching from techno to another different thing they don't yeah. know, mm. and a sweet voice coming out of it. Yeah. And it makes the people like, what kind of song is it? Yeah. And right now, they all know everywhere, like, Afrobeat, Afro, is that the Afrobeat yeah. song? <laughs> and we're just pushing it really hard, keeping it real there, making it happen. Yeah. They're all see this. They see every Nigerian artist on the TV station, and mm -hmm. we coming out there, and they're seeing it like, yeah. does it mean every Nigerian can also do like you? <laughs> yeah. Said, I like it's so, only a gift. Yeah, it's a gift. And I like your story when the, the, you uh, talked to us about when you said uh, you, you've always had music in you, but you never really had the confidence yeah. to come out and do it until yeah. your friends just told you, look, you have to do this thing. So talk to us about that story. Uh, it was a funny situation, mm. I could say. It, it all started like, I got the, my record studio in my room and I just make music, make the beats myself then. I tried everything and I was like, okay. I listened to it, I was like, whatever I did, I believed if somebody don't hear it with me, right. it's not even okay. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, it's not okay. I have to contact somebody who know a producer who lived in, who based here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And he was like, okay, bro, what do you want? I said, oh, I think I got some talent in me, but I want some beats from you. Mm -hmm. And he had to send me a lot of beats and I had to go through everything. And I picked one, the one I liked, and I sent the rest back. I said, hey, I want this one. It's like, are you sure? I said, yeah. And I kept singing, singing, singing in the room. And I finished, I sent back to him. He produced them. And everything was like to what I want. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And a friend of mine came to my house and sit down. And I was like cooking something in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> and I just played the song for him in the living room. And, and he was said, playing. Yeah, yeah. He was playing PlayStation. And I make the song hard. And he was like, Are you a bro, that's a cool song. Can you play it back? Yeah. I was like, really? So yeah. I went back and played back. I went to the kitchen. I never cooked, I was just... And you, here, and you never told him that it was I never you. told him, it right. was me. I was just looking. And he was like taking his phone, like looking for the name, looking, because yeah. I said, hey bro, the name is Mikola, but I never see it outside. Yeah. I said, yeah, the problem is... It's you. It's me. <laughs> yeah. And of course, that's, that's where you started from. And you know, lots of people started getting a lot yeah. of traction from your music and it's been absolutely amazing. And the responses have been great. Now you're gonna do something for us today, okay. obviously. And after that, I wanna take you to the kitchen where we have some Nigerian food, not German Whoa. this time. So are you ready for us? Of course, All right, ready. so let's do it. Let's be colo, ladies and gentlemen. Ginger me, baby. Ginger. Yay. Hey, ginger me. 
actually ginger <laughs> about this food. Yes, we are all ginger, mm -hmm. trust yes, me. So. Because uh, Chef Ify has put us in a gingerous <laughs> mood. <laughs> if that would exist. Oh, wow. <laughs> all right, so guys, this morning we made garden egg sauce mm. with boiled yams and unripe plantains. Oh, and trust wow. me, guys, this or, this garden egg sauce Ooh. is oh, hey guys, hey. All right, so yeah, Nicolo and your mother. Bring in Nicolo to the kitchen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hi. welcome. Hi. welcome. Hi. Good morning. Please, Please have a seat. Thank welcome welcome to, to the court. kitchen. Round to everybody. Oh. Hey. Welcome. Take a seat. This is a gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> now, I love this leather jacket. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Nice. nice. Welcome Thank to the so kitchen, much. Mikolo. Wow. Yeah, so this Thanks. is Chef Ify. Mm -hmm. And this okay. morning, she's made garden egg sauce with oh my gosh, boiled so yam lovely. and unripe plantain. Mm. You see what we did there? You see mm. what we did there? Very satisfying. Nice. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Looks nice on the screen. Have you ever had garden egg sauce before? No. No, I never tried oh, it. Oh, so it's your first time. Garden uh, so you could tweet about it and say, oh, I had my first garden egg sauce here on Wake Up Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. So please have cool. a taste while Chef Ify tells us how okay. she came about this yum sum oh, meal. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm. fantastic. Chef Ify, Yummy, you, you seem to get mentioned a lot this day. Oh, yeah. Yum sum yum meal. Yum. It just keeps, you know, <laughs> That's what I, I, that's what I put together. Dig right it right now. It's, it's my thing. Chef Ify, should I? Yes, yeah, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Dig so, Chef Ify, right over to you quickly. Um, <laughs> how you came about the yams, the garden egg sauce? Okay, so basically yeah. I'm always trying to avoid the look on my face. We blend it, boiled and blended. And then palm oil, onion, um, blended tomato, pepper, and then um, tatashi. Mm. But more cow skin and then smoked fish, yeah. dry fish, and then seasoning. Ha. Ha. Nice, nice. Yes. Mix everything <laughs> wow. together. Love it. Tell like us what it. you think. Hmm? I'm very sorry. Mm. I cannot continue chopping, like it's digging the it. rest here. I want to go do this thing private because this is like <laughs> awesome. He wants to go do it in private. Though. This is awesome. Private. Yeah, so. Let's so, come so, down to the African way to. To get like okay, I like yeah. I like the way it's right. bringing out right. some, you know. You say yeah. I was about I want to go and chop the meal yeah. privately. <laughs> nice. And then you well, did we it. We have to wrap up. We have to wrap up, people. Yeah, big thank you to Homely NG for the kitchen accessories and for La. Yes, yeah, so at for last place for the man. styling. Mm. We appreciate you and everybody that's been on the show today. We appreciate yeah. you too. It's been fun. It's been real. Yeah. It's been good. Yeah. Thursday edition is coming your way. Well from done, Chef Ify. Yeah. Yes, indeed. See you tomorrow. Have a great day, y'all. Bye.